Hi, welcome back to the workshop. I'm Jeremy, and today I'll be showing you how I made this modern farmhouse table with an X base and large trestle in the middle. Thanks for joining, and I hope you enjoy. So I began by milling my components. I jointed the faces and edges, uh, plane the thickness, and then cut to width. I needed three stretchers here, and then four components for the X legs. And with my components milled up, I moved on to cutting the X legs to size. This was easily done with the miter gauge and using my fence as a stop. And then I proceeded to cut the large half lap that will allow the two pieces to intersect one another. So taking my time to set up everything with a stop block so I get consistency and I clamped these to my miter gauge um, so it'd be a little safer. This piece was quite heavy so I didn't want it moving around through the cut. And I continued taking pass after pass until eventually I worked my way all the way across the board the width of the legs. And back at the workbench, I used a marking gauge to give myself a consistent line on the edge of the board. This will help uh, establish the depth of the two half laps. And then with my shoulder plane, I took passes across, checking after each one to be sure I haven't gone past my line. And I kept working my way across until I had a nice flat joint. And then one way to fine tune a half lap like this is to hand plane the edges that will help the two pieces fit together if it's a little snug. And as you can see here, I kept working my way through until I got a nice tight fit. And next up was the joinery for the large stretcher that will go in the middle of the two legs. I established a center point by marking a line where the X's meet. And that allowed me to make this square jig and by marking the center of the mortise opening there and lining it up with the center line that I drew, I'm able to get a square mortise to the X shape. And what I'm doing here is uh, plunging full depth in the corners. And then I'm working my way around this jig in small shallow passes so I don't strain the router bit until I reach my full depth. And I think this mortise ended up being somewhere around three quarters of an inch wide and about an inch or so deep. And next I moved on to laying out where I wanted my sliding dovetails uh, for the upper stretchers to drop into the top of the leg. And I've marked out with the pencil here and then mark my center line so I could go in and uh, do most of the waste removal with a drill bit again trying to minimize the strain on the routers or the router bit and then with this simple jig I'm able to use a collet and a dovetail bit to go through one side and you'll see here I go through that left side, move over, and then back out the other side. And I end up with a nice big dovetail for these large stretchers that will go in the top of the legs. With my mortises complete, I moved on to creating the tenons and slotting dovetail tenon. So I did this at the router table in conjunction with my tenoning jig. So the upper rails use the dovetail bit to create the dovetail shape. And then the large stretcher in the middle, I use a straight bit to create a regular tenon. And back at the workbench, I cleaned up the shoulder of the um, joint, so use a marking gauge to mark a fine line and sawed away the bulk with a handsaw and then chiseled to the line. 
And then what I'm doing here is um, sawing the corners of this mortise and then rounding over these mortises with a chisel. And you do want to saw um, like a little 45 at that corner so that as you chisel um, on the long grain like that, it doesn't try to split out, mess up the bottom of your tenon there. And with a few swipes of the rabbiting block plane, I'm able to fine tune the fit. And again here with the sliding dovetail doing the same thing, just knocking off the top of that um, dovetail tenon there so that I'm not going to use the whole thing in the joint. Only part of it will, will be used, so I'll end up with a little shoulder there on the end. And then I like to clean up the edges of boards with a hand plane. Now you can do this with a sander, but if with a nice sharp hand plane, I can get a really good surface. And then I just touch it up real lightly with some sandpaper. And now, kind of moment of truth for the fitment. The large stretcher going in the middle. And it's not a super deep mortise because it's going to end up getting uh, reinforced with some lag screws from the other side and the concealed wood plugs. And then, of course, the sliding dovetail has plenty of mechanical strength. So all I need to do here is make sure I have a snug fit and tap those in. And as you can see, I was pretty proud of how well these joints came together. One thing I really like about using the tenoning jig in conjunction with the router table and a uh, dovetail bit is the tenoning jig has a fine tune adjustment so I'm able to, to make tiny little adjustments to get the perfect fit and I can keep going back to the table until I get the fit that I needed. And then next up I moved on to milling up the lumber for the tabletop. So milling, um, milling the lumber flat, square, uh, ripping to width, and then I did go back and square up these edges and uh, fine-tune them with the hand plane to make sure my joints were coming together nicely. And with the top being this big and heavy, it is pretty handy to have a domino joiner. I'm using this mostly for the alignment of the boards um, and not so much for the strength. The, the glue joint alone would be plenty strong, but with these big heavy planks, it's really nice to have a kind of a helping hand with these dominoes. And the gluing went pretty straightforward. It's really important when you do big glue ups like this to get everything ready to go. So I had clamps ready. I have some um, riser blocks there so I can get my clamps under and over the, the um, tabletop. This helps me keep everything nice and flat and helps the glue up go uh, quickly. And I worked in stages, um, so I glued up two boards and then I went back and glued those two boards up together to get my full width. And I cut the tabletop to length with a straight edge and my circular saw. And then it was on to sanding, so um, real important thing here is just keep that sander moving. Don't bear down in one spot. Um, sanding's a long process. So just trust the process, go through your grits, keep that sander moving, um, and you'll end up with a nice finish on top. And then I went back and put a little chamfer on all the components, including the tabletop, corners of the feet, and I chamfered around all of the legs. Um, and this build doesn't have a whole lot of interest to it. It's meant to be modern to have that modern farmhouse look, but this little chamfer really added more than I thought it would. So it's probably like a 3 16 chamfer. And as you can see here in the corners, I went back and um, tidied things up to make them nice and square. Little details like this, I think, is what sets amateur furniture apart from professional furniture. And instead of leaving that rounded over chamfer in that corner, just take a minute, go back and square it up. And it's little things like that that'll catch your eye as you get close um, to fine furniture. And 
And then I finished up with final sanding, so getting everything prepped here. I use um, the larger sander on that tabletop. It's a six inch sander, and this is my 3M five inch sander. I've been really impressed with that sander. Um, it's very smooth, really easy to work with. And then I went back here and hand sanded all of the edges to get rid of any um, rough spots. And the finish I'm using here is the Osmo Pollux Oil, the gloss version. So I buff that on with a buffing pad, and then I come back and um, buff off the excess with a nice clean towel. And the key here is you just want to buff it off so that it pretty much looks dry. And it won't actually be dry, but it'll look dry. It'll kind of feel dry to the touch. And then in eight hours or so, it'll be ready for a next coat. And as you can see here, I'm pre-finishing all of my parts, so I haven't glued up anything yet. Um, the more I build furniture, the more I'm becoming a fan of pre-finishing. It's not always convenient in a dusty shop, but if you can do it, it can really save time and headache. It's so much easier to use uh, my big buffer to buff on finish and being able to um, buff it off by hand without running into all the corners and edges. So um, give it a try sometime if you can pre-finish your parts. It really helps, and all you have to do uh, with the glue-ups is uh, kind of wipe the glue away. and You don't have to worry about the glue staining the, the finish either since the finish is already on it. But the glue-up went pretty easy. Um, I had everything laid out, and I already um, made sure all my joints were fitting nicely. So I used regular PVA glue and the big stretcher in the middle. And then I used a liquid high glue for the sliding dovetails on top. And the high glue is not water-based, so it helps the dovetails slide in a little bit easier. Then I finished up the joinery in the base by adding some structural lag screws to the big stretcher in the middle. This is probably overkill, but I would hate to um, a table this heavy to like break or crack that joint to crack. Um, you know, if they were moving it or if someone sat on it or something like that. So I basically um, drilled some plugs for the head of the screw and then drilled deeper for the shank of the screw. And I ended up filling these in with uh, some wooden plugs. And the sliding dovetails on top, they have plenty of uh, mechanical strength for the two legs trying to pull apart, but they don't have as much strength in the stretchers trying to pull up and out of the joint. So to lock those in place, I simply mark and drill a hole for a long dowel that will go in each one, and that dowel um, acts as a pin to pin the joint in place. And I typically make any dowels or plugs, um, that way I have a nice grain match uh, to the piece that I'm making. In this case, you're going to see the end grain of these dowels, so I'm not necessarily trying to match it. But it is nice and handy to have a dowel plate like this where I can make virtually any size dowel that I need uh, for pinning joints or concealing screws. And it's pretty easy to do by ripping some stock and then driving um, that stuck through the dowel plate. Only takes a few minutes. And here you can see I'm putting the dowels in. So I'm using high glue here. Since I already have finish on these pieces, I don't want the liquid PVA glue on the finish. What I have found is that the hide glue wipes and cleans up a little bit easier than PVA glue. It seems like it doesn't stain as bad, um, especially in open grain woods like oak that I'm working with here. So the liquid high glue um, was a nice choice. It wipes up with a wet cloth really easy, um, and it doesn't uh, affect the finish as much.
And as always, I stamp and sign my work. So especially with um, fine furniture and heirloom pieces, it's nice to put your signature on your work so that not only the people who are buying it uh, know that it came from you and the time you put into it, but possibly generations down the road will know who made it and when. And the last piece of this build was to secure the top to the base. So as you can see here, I drilled some larger counter bores into the bottom of the table stretchers. And then I took uh, the time to put a little chamfer on the inside of those holes. Nice little touch um, so that no one's getting scraped by sharp edges if they're ever going in there to disassemble it. But I, I used the easy lock threaded inserts and it has this special little uh, tool that secures to your drill and you thread the insert onto that and then that drills use your drill to turn the insert into the piece and I found it works really well so after just lining these up I drilled them out put the inserts in and bolted it down And here's the final piece. So I'm really proud of how this one turned out. It's not super complex, but I really paid attention to keeping the tabletop flat, keeping my joinery nice and tight, and the overall craftsmanship of the piece. And I'm pleased that the rusticness of the oak blended with the modern design um, really fit the bill for my client and their home. So if you enjoyed this build, uh, like, subscribe, and follow. And until next time, happy woodworking.